What's up guys, welcome to another Fazbear Fright read through. Today we are going to be doing the second story of the first book Into the Pit, which is To Be Beautiful and this is one of my favourite stories, obviously I've read it, I'm going back to these stories because I didn't do read throughs of these ones before. Anyway, uh, if you guys enjoy make sure that you give this a like and you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to have more audiobooks in the future for more uh, books that come out. <laughs> so, we're going to get straight into this. This one is a roller coaster, really, and I really love this one. Um, we're actually going to read it again and see if I love it as much as I did when I first read it. So, let's go. Let's get straight into it. I am very sorry for all of the highlighted areas. This is just the first time I've read it and I don't know how you get rid of them. <laughs> so I, I apologise. Anyway, let's begin. Flat and fat. Those were the two words that Sarah thought of when she looked in the mirror. Which she did a lot. How could somebody with such a curved belly be as flat as an ironing board somewhere else? I, I completely messed up that line. How could somebody with such a curved belly be as flat as an ironing board everywhere else? Other girls could describe their shapes as being like an hourglass or a pear. Sarah was shaped like a potato. Looking at her bulbous nose, her prominent ears, and how all her parts seemed stuck onto her body at random, she was reminded of the Mrs. Mixon match doll she had as a kid. The one with different eyes, ears, no noses, mouths, and other body parts you could stick on her to make her look as hilarious as you wanted. And so that was the nickname she came up with for herself, Mrs. Mixon match. But at least Mrs. Mix and Match had Mrs. Mr. Mix and Match. Unlike the girls at school whom she called the beautiful, Sarah didn't have a boyfriend or any prospect of one. Sure, there was one boy she looked at, dreamed of, but she knew he wasn't looking at or dreaming of her. She guessed that she, like Mr. Mrs. Mix and Match in her single days, would just have to sit and wait around until some equally unfortunate looking guy came along but in the meantime she needed to finish getting ready for school. Still looking at her worst enemy, the mirror, she applied some mascara and pink tinted lip balm. For her birthday, her mum had finally given her permission to wear a little light makeup. She gave her dull, uh, mousy, mousy brown hair <laughs> uh, a thorough brushing. A, uh, she sighed, it was a good, it was as good as it was going to get, and it wasn't good. The walls of Sarah's room were decorated with photos of models and pop stars she had cut out of magazines. Their eyes were smoky, their lips full, their legs long. They were slender, curvy and confident, young but womanly, and their perfect bodies were wearing clothes Sarah couldn't even dream of affording. Sometimes when she was getting ready in the morning, she felt as if these goddesses of beauty were looking at her with disappointment. Oh, they seem to say, is that what you're wearing? Or, no, hope of a modelling career for you, sweetheart. Still, she liked having the goddesses there. If she couldn't see beauty when she looked in the mirror, at least she could see it when she looked at the walls. In the kitchen, her mom was dressed for work in a long floral print dress, her salt and pepper hair long and loose down her back. Her mom never wore makeup or did anything special with her hair and she did have a tendency to put on weight around her hips. Still, Sarah had to admit that her mom had a natural prettiness she herself lacked. Maybe it skips a generation, Sarah thought. Hey, cupcake, mom said. I picked up some bagels. I got that kind you like with all the seeds. You want me to pop one in the toaster for you? No, I'll just have a yogurt, Sarah said, though her mouth watered at the thought of a toasty everything bagel slathered in cream cheese. I don't need all those carbs. Mom rolled her eyes. Sarah, those little yogurt cups you live on have uh, have just 90 calories in, them, calories in them. It's a wonder you don't pass out from hunger in school. She took a big bite of the bagel she had fixed for herself. She had put the top and bottom together sandwich style and cream cheese squished out when she chomped it. Besides, Mom said, her mouth full, you're much too young to be worried about carbs and you're much too old not to be worried about them, Sarah wanted to say, but she stopped herself. Instead, she said, A yoghurt and a bottle of water will be plenty to hold me over until lunchtime. Suit yourself, Mum said, but I'm telling you, 
This bagel is delicious. Unlike most mornings, Sarah actually made it to the school bus in time, so she didn't have to walk. She sat by herself and watched YouTube makeup tutorials on her phone. Maybe on her next birthday, mum would let her wear more than mascara and BB cream and tinted lip balm. She could get what she needed to do some real contouring to make her cheekbones look more pronounced and her nose less bulbous. Getting her brows done professionally would also really help. Right now, she and her tweezers were fighting a daily battle against the unibrow. Before first period, as she got her science book out of her locker, she saw them. They strutted down the hall like supermodels doing a runaway show, and everybody, everybody, stopped what they were doing to watch them. Lydia, Gillian, Tabitha, and Emma. They were cheerleaders. They were royalty. They were stars. They were who every girl in the school wanted to be, and who every boy in the school wanted to be with. They were the beautifuls. Dun 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 dun! <laughs> no. Uh, each girl, I, I thought they deserved like a The Incredibles kind of thing. Sorry. Uh, each girl had her own particular brand of beauty. Lydia had blonde hair and blue eyes and a rosy complexion, while Julian had fiery red hair and cat like green eyes. I don't care. Tabitha was dark with chocolate brown eyes and lustrous brown hair and Emma had a chestnut hair and enormous doe-like brown eyes. All the girls had long hair, the better to flip luxuriously over your f their, fo their shoulders and, <laughs> and were slender but with enough curves to fill out their clothes in the bust and the hips. And their clothes. Their clothes were as beautiful as they were. Uh, as they were, sorry all bought at high-end stores and big cities they visited on their vacations. Today, they were all wearing black and white. A short black dress with a white collar and cuffs for Lydia. A white shirt with a black and white polka dot mini skirt for Gillian. Ah, oh, to be fair, that's the way to go. Uh, <laughs> a black and white striped... Wait, what are they? Penguins? A voice cut off Sarah's admiring thoughts. Huh? Sarah turned to see Abby, her best friend since kindergarten. Uh... I just said that completely wrong. I, I butcher every single word in this book. Uh, she was wearing some kind of hideous poncho and a long, loose, floral print skirt. She looked like she could be running a fortune telling booth at the school carnival. Why do I know what that looks like? I said they don't look like penguins, Abby said. Let's hope there, there aren't any hungry seals around. She made a loud, loud barking sound then laughed. You're crazy, Sarah said. I think they look perfect. You always do, Abby said. She was hugging her social studies book against her chest. And I have a theory about why. You have a theory about everything, Sarah said. It was true. Abby wanted to be a scientist, and all those theories would probably come in handy one day when she was working on her PhD. You know how we used to play Barbies when we were little? Abby asked. When they were little, Sarah and Abby had each had pink carrying cases filled with Barbies and their various clothes and accessories. They had taken turns carrying their cases to each other's houses and had played for hours, stopping only for juice box and graham cracker breaks. Life had been so easy back then. Yeah, Sarah said. It was funny. Abby hadn't changed much since those days. She still wore her hair in the same braids, still wore gold uh, wire-framed glasses. The braces on her teeth and a few inches of height were the only differences. Still... When Sarah looked at Abby, she could at least see that the opportunity for beauty was there. Abby had a flawless coffee with cream complexion and startling hazel eyes behind those glasses of hers. She took dance classes after school and had a graceful, slender body, even if she hid it under hideous ponchos and other baggy clothes. Sarah had no beauty and it tormented her. Abby had beauty, but didn't care about it enough to notice. My theory, Abby said, getting animated the way she did when she was lecturing, is that you used to love to play with Barbies, but now that you're too old for them, you just need a Barbie substitute. Those empty-headed fashionist stars are your Barbie substitute. That's why you wanted to play with them. Play? Sometimes it was like Abby was still a little kid. I don't want to play with them, Sarah said, though she wasn't sure this was exactly true. I'm too old to play with anybody. I just admire them, is all. Abby rolled her eyes. What is there to admire? The fact that they can match their eyeshadows to their outfits? If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go on admiring Marie Curie and Rosa Parks. Sarah smiled. Abby had always been such a nerd. A lovable nerd, but still a nerd. Relatable. <laughs> 
Well, you've never had much interest in fashion. I remember how you used to treat your Barbies. Abby grinned back. Well, there was the one I shaved bald. And then there was the one with the hair I coloured green with a magic marker so it looked like some kind of crazy supervillain. She wiggled her eyebrows. Now if those teen queens would let me play with them that way, I might be interested. Sarah laughed. You're the one who's a supervillain. Nope, Abby said. Just a smart aleck. I don't know what that, that means. <laughs> Which is why I'm way more fond of those cheerleaders. Abby gave a little wave and then hurried off to class. At lunch, Sarah sat across from Abby. It was Friday, which was pizza day, and then on Abby's tray was one of the school's rectangular pizza slices, a cup of fruit cocktail, and a carton of milk. School pizza wasn't the best, but it was still pizza, so it was pretty good. Too many carbs, though. Sarah had hit the salad bar instead and had gotten a green salad with low-fat vinaigrette dressing. I don't eat salad, so I'd have no idea what that word is. <laughs> Vinaigrette? Vin Has that got like vinegar in it? <laughs> vinaigrette. Um, she liked ranch a lot better than a vinaigrette, but <laughs> ranch added too many calories. The other kids at the table were nerds who hurried through their lunch so they could play card games until the bell rang. Sarah knew the beautifuls called it the loser table. Sarah stabbed at her lettuce with her dull plastic fork. What would you do? She asked Abby. If you had a million dollars... Abby grinned. Oh, that's easy. First, I'd wait, Sarah said, because she knew the kind of thing Abby was going to say. You're not allowed to say that you would give it to the Humane Society or the homeless or whatever. The money's just to spend on yourself. Abby smiled. And since it's imaginary money, I don't have to feel guilty. That's right, Sarah said, crunching on a baby carrot. Okay, Abby took a bite of pizza and chewed thoughtfully. Well, in that case, I'd use it to travel. Paris first, I think with my mum and dad and brother, we'd stay in a fancy hotel and go to the Eiffel Tower in the Louvre and eat the best restaurants. Eat the best restaurants? Yeah, well done, Ozone. Eat at the best restaurants and stuff ourselves with pastries and drink coffee at fancy cafes and people watch. What would you do? Sarah pushed her salad around on her plate. Well, I'd definitely get my teeth professionally whitened and I'd go to one of those high-end salons and get my hair cut and coloured. Blonde, but a realistic-looking blonde. I'd get skin treatments and a makeover with really good makeup, not the cheap drugstore kind. And I'd get a nose job. There are other cosmetic procedures I'd like to have, but I don't think they'll do them on a kid. Not gonna lie, I think the uh, the white the teeth whitening is gonna cost you all of it. <laughs> um, I I I know for a fact that that is very expensive alone. Like getting your teeth done, you'll know that someone's rich if they have really really nice teeth. Anyway. And they shouldn't, Abby said. She looked shocked, like Sarah had said something really bad. Seriously, you'd put yourself through all that pain and suffering just to change the way you look? I had my tonsils taken out, and it was horrible. I'll never have any other operation if I can help it. She looked at Sarah intensely. What's wrong with your nose anyway? Sarah put her hand to her nose. Isn't it obvious? It's huge, Abby laughed. No, it's not. It's, it's just a regular nose, a nice nose. And when you think about it, does anybody really have a beautiful nose? Noses are kind of weird. I actually like animal noses better than people noses. My dog has a really cute nose. Sarah shot a glance over to the beautiful's table. All of them had perfect tiny noses, adorable little buttons, not a single potato nose in the bunch. Abby looked over to the table where Sarah was looking. Oh, the penguins again? Oh, okay, so the thing about penguins is they may be cute, but they all look alike. You're a person, and you should look like an individual. Yeah, an ugly individual, Sarah said, pushing away her salad plate. No, a nice-looking individual who worries too much about her appearance. Abby reached out and touched Sarah's forearm. You've changed a lot in the past couple of years, Sarah. We used to talk about books and movies and music. Now you, all you want to talk about is how you don't like the way you look and, and about clothes and hairstyles and make makeup you wish you could afford. And instead of having pictures on your wall of cute baby animals like you used to, you've got pictures of all those skinny models. I liked the baby animals a lot better. Sarah felt anger rising like bile in her throat. How dare Abby judge her? Friends were supposed to be the people who didn't judge you. She stood up. You're right, Abby, she said, loud enough so that the other people at the table turned to look at her. I have changed. I've grown up, and you haven't. I think about adult things and you still buy stickers and watch cartoons and draw horses. Sarah was so angry that she marched off. 
and left her tray on the table for somebody else to clean up. By the time school was over, Sarah had a plan. She wasn't going to sit at the loser table anymore because she wasn't going to be a loser. She was going to be as popular and as pretty as she could possibly be. It was amazing how quickly her plan fell into place. As soon as she was home, she drug in a... Sorry, I read that as drug. <laughs> she dug in her dresser drawer where she kept her money. She had $20 of birthday money from her grandma and 10 left from her allowance. It was enough. The beauty supply store was just about a 15 minute walk from her house. She could get there and back and do what she needed to do before her mum got home at six. The store was brightly lit, with row after row of beauty products, brushes and curling irons, hair dryers, na nail polish and makeup. She headed for their aisle labelled hair colour. She didn't have to have a million dollars to become a blonde. She could do it for around 10 bucks and just look like a million. She selected a box marked pure platinum, decorated with a picture of a smiling model with long, luminous, white gold hair. Beautiful. The woman at the checkout counter had obviously dyed bright red hair and false eyelashes that made her resemble a, gir a, a giraffe? A giraffe? Red hair and false eyelashes? Oh, I guess it's just the eyelashes. I was like, how does red hair... Oh, giraffes can have, like, brown, red... Uh, whatever. Shut up. Ow, I just slapped myself really hard. Now, if you want your hair to look like the picture, you'll have to bleach it first, she said. Bleach it? How? Sarah asked. Her mum used bleach and water to clean the floor sometimes. Surely this wasn't the same thing. You want to get the peroxide that's back on aisle two, the cashier said. When Sarah returned with the plastic bottle, the woman looked at her with narrowed eyes. Does your mama know you're about to colour your hair, hon? Oh, sure, Sarah said, not making eye, eye contact. She doesn't mind. She didn't know if her mum would mind or not. She guessed she would find out. Well, that's good then, she said, ringing up Sarah's purchases. Maybe she can help you. Make sure you get the colour on good and even. At home, Sarah locked herself in the bathroom and read the directions from the box of hair colour. They seemed simple enough. She put on the black plastic gloves that came with the hair dye kit, draped a towel around her shoulders and worked the peroxide into her hair. She wasn't sure how long to leave the peroxide on, and so she sat on the edge of the bathtub and played a few games on her phone and watched some YouTube makeup tutorials. First, her scalp started to itch. Then it started to burn. It burned as if someone had thrown a handful of lit matches into her hair. She quickly typed into her phone, how long to leave peroxide in the hair? The answer that appeared was no longer than 30 minutes. How long had she left it in? She jumped to her feet, grabbed the detachable shower head, turned the water on, cold, leaned her head over the tub and started spraying. The frigid water soothed her fiery scalp. When she looked in the bathroom mirror, her hair was stark white, like she had become an old woman way before her time. The bathroom stank of bleach, making her nose run and her eyes water. She cracked the window and opened the bottle of hair colour. It was time to complete her transformation. She looked up the hair colour ingredients in a squeeze bottle and squirted the mixture all over her hair and massaged it in. She set the alarm on her phone to go off in 25 minutes and settled in to wait. By the time her mum got home, Sarah was going to look like a whole new person. She played happily on her phone until the alarm buzzed, then rinsed off again with the detachable shower head. She didn't bother with the conditioner that came with the hair colour kit because she was too anxious to see the results. She toweled up her hair and stepped over to the mirror to see the new her. She screamed. She screamed so loud that the neighbour's dog started barking. Her hair was not the platinum blonde but sewage green. She thought of Abby when they were little, colouring her Barbie's hair with a green magic marker. Now she was that Barbie. How? How... How could she do something to make herself pretty and end up even uglier than before? Why was life so unfair? She ran to her room, flung herself onto her bed and cried. She must have cried herself into a miserable sleep because the next thing she knew, her mum was sitting on the edge of the bed saying, what happened here? Sarah looked up. She could see the shock in her mum's eyes. I, I was trying to colour my hair, Sarah sobbed. I wanted to be blonde, but I'm, I'm, you're green. I can see that, Mum said. Well, I would say there would be consequences from you colouring your hair without my permission, but I think you're already experiencing some of those. 
You're going to clear up the bathroom though, but for right now, we need to see what we can do to make you look less like a, a Martian. <laughs> she touched Sarah's hair. Oof! If <laughs> I love the addition of the oof there. If uh, it feels like straw. Listen, put on your shoes. The hair salon at the mall should still be open. Maybe they can fix this. Sarah put on her shoes and stuffed her moss-coloured tress tresses, tre tresses under a baseball cap. When they got to the salon and Sarah yanked off the cap, the stylist gasped. Well, it's a good thing you called 911. This is definitely a hair emergency. Ha, <laughs> good one. <laughs> An hour and a half later, Sarah was back to having brown hair, now a few inches shorter because the stylist had to cut off the damaged ends. Well, Mum said, once they were in the car on the way home. That was a big chunk of my paycheck. I probably should have just let you go to school with green hair. It would have served you right. Sarah returned to school, not in a blaze of platinum blonde glory, but as her usual mousy brown self. I'm saying mousy, I don't know if it's like, it's not moosey, because moose has two S's. I don't know. Still, when lunchtime rolled around, she resolved that even without blonde hair, she wasn't going to sit at the loser table. She served herself from the salad bar then walked right past where Abby was sitting. She didn't need Abby to criticise her today. A knot formed in her stomach, stomach when she approached the beautifuls' table. They must have decided today was jeans day because they were all wearing cute skinny jeans with fitted jewel-coloured tops and matching slip-on canvas shoes. Sarah sat down at the opposite end of the table, far enough away that she didn't seem to be intruding, but close enough that they could include her if, she wa if they wanted. She waited a few minutes, expecting one of them to tell her to go away, but nobody did. She was relieved and hopeful, but then she realised that none of them even seemed to see her. They just kept right on with their conversation like she was invincible. Invincible? <laughs> I'm so bad at reading. Uh, invisible. She did not say that. Oh, yes, she did. No, yeah. And then what did he say? <clears throat> Sarah pushed her salad around on her plate and tried to follow the conversation, but she had no idea who they were talking about and she certainly wasn't going to ask them. Probably they wouldn't even hear her if she said any, if, the, if she said something. If they couldn't see her, they probably couldn't hear her either. She felt like a ghost. She picked up her tray and headed toward the trash can, desperate to get out of the cafeteria, despite to get out of the whole school, really. Despite? Desperate. Ah! Uh, but there were still 7th and 8th periods to suffer through boring social studies and stupid math. Uh, excuse me, math is great. Uh, lost in her suffering, she bumped right into a tall boy, dumping the remains of her salad on his crisp white shirt. She looked up into the ocean blue eyes of Mason Blair, the most perfect guy in school. The guy she always hoped might notice her. Hey, watch where you're going, he said, picking a cucumber slice off his expensive designer shirt. The, uh, the sauce-covered vegetable had left a perfectly oily circle in the middle of his chest. Sorry, she squeaked, then threw the rest of her salad. What Mason wasn't wearing into the trash and ran a half out of the cafeteria. What a nightmare. She had wanted Mason to uh, notice her, but not in this way. Not as the ugly, clumsy girl with fried, frizzy brown hair who gave a new meaning to the words tossed salad. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, why did everything have to go so wrong for her? The Beautifuls never did anything stupid or clumsy. Never humili humi humiliated themselves in front of a cute boy. Their beauty was like a suit of armour that protected them from life's pain and embarrassment. When the school day finally dragged to an end, Sarah decided to walk home instead of taking the bus. Given how her day had been, she didn't feel like she could take the risk of being with a group, uh, a big group of kids again. It would just be inviting disaster. She walked alone, telling herself she might as well get used to solitude. She was always going to be alone. She passed the brown cow at the ice cream stand where the beautifuls went with their boyfriends after school, laughing as they sat together at picnic tables, sharing milkshakes or sundaes. And of course, the beautifuls could scarf all the ice cream they wanted and not gain an ounce. Life was so unfair. To get to her house, Sarah had to walk past the wrecking yard. It was an ugly expanse of dirt filled with the destroyed corpses of cars. There were smashed in pickup trucks, squashed SUVs and vehicles that had been reduced to nothing more than rusted heaps of junk. 
She was sure that none of the beautifuls had to pass a place so hideous on their way home. Even though the junkyard was horrible, or maybe because it was so horrible, she couldn't help looking at it when she passed by. She was like a passing driver gawking at an accident on the side of the road. The car nearest the fence definitely fit into the heap of junk category. It was one of those big old sedans that only very elderly people still drove, the kind of car Sarah's mum called a land yacht. This yacht had seen better days. It had once been light blue, but now it was mostly rusty orange brown. In some places the rust had eaten all the way through the metal and the car's body was so battered it looked like it had been attacked by an angry mob wielding baseball bats. Then she saw the arm. Ooh, the arm. The arm, you say. A thin, delicate arm was sticking out of the trunk of the car. Its little white hand with fingers outstretched as if waving hello or waving for help like someone who was drowning. Sarah burned with curiosity. What was the hand attached to? The gate was unlocked. Nobody seemed to be watching. After looking around to make sure no one was nearby, she stepped inside the wrecking yard. She approached the old sedan and touched the arm, then the hand. It was metal from the feel of it. She found the handle on the trunk and pulled it, but the lever wouldn't budge. The car was so dented and battered that the trunk wouldn't open and close properly anymore. Sarah thought of the story a teacher had read to her class once in elementary school about King Arthur pulling a sword from a stone when nobody else could. Could she pull this doll, or whatever it is, from this wrecked vehicle? She looked around until she found a strong flat piece of metal that could maybe work as a substitute crowbar. Sarah brazed her foot against the car's crumpled bumper, slid the metal inside the trunk door and pried upward. The first time she tried, it didn't give at all, but the second time, it flipped open and threw her off balance. She fell backward and landed on her butt in the dirt. She stood up to inspect the owner of the hand she had been sticking out of the trunk. Was it a discarded doll, outgrown by some little girl and tossed in the trash to end up in the dump? The thought made Sarah sad. Sarah pulled the doll from the trunk and stood it up on its feet. Though, once she looked at it, she wasn't sure doll was the right word to describe it. It was a few inches taller than Sarah herself, and it was jointed so that its limbs and waists looked movable. Was it some kind of marionette? A robot? Whatever it was, it was beautiful. It had wide, green, longer-lashed eyes, pink Cupid's bow lips, and pink circles on its cheeks. Its face was painted like a clown's, but a pretty clown. Its red hair was pulled up into two twin pigtails on top of its head and its body was sleek and silver, with a long neck, a tiny waist, and a rounded bust and hips. Its legs and arms were long, slender, and elegant. It looked like a robotic version of the gorgeous supermodels whose pictures hung on the walls of Sarah's room. Where had it come from? And why would someone want to get rid of such a beautiful, perfect object? Well, if whoever was... if, Well, if whoever put this thing in the dump didn't want it, then Sarah did. She picked up the girl-shaped robot and found it surprisingly light. She carried it sideways, her arm around its delicate waist. At home in her room, Sarah set the girl robot down on the floor. It was a little tarnished and dusty, as if it had been in the trash heap for a while. Sarah went to the kitchen and got a rag and a bottle of cleaner that was supposed to be safe for metal surfaces. She sprayed and wiped the front of the robot inch by inch from head to toe. The shininess made it even more beautiful. As Sarah got behind the robot to clean the other side, she noticed an on-off on switch at the small of its back. After she finished wiping it down, she turned the switch position to on. Nothing happened. Sarah turned away, slightly disappointed. The robot was still cool to have, though, even if it didn't do anything. 